Samsung's T5 external SSDs are fast becoming something of a de facto standard for fast data access on the go. And regular viewers of the channel will have heard me banging on about how great these things are. But I thought I should make a proper review video to explain why these drives are just so good. Uh, we're going to test performance via USB 3.1. And we're also going to compare how the drives perform on older machines that are equipped with USB 3.0. Samsung claims transfer speeds of up to 540 megabytes per second, so we'll test that claim. Uh, now I've got two models here, uh, a 500 gigabyte and a terabyte. In fact, I've got two of each. And what I want to know is, is there any performance difference between them? I've done a whole bunch of speed testing to find out. Uh, contain your excitement if you can, and let's take a closer look at the Samsung T5. The T5 released in August 2015, replacing Samsung's earlier T3 drives. And almost five years on, they've built quite the reputation, particularly within the creative community. Now I'm filming this episode on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera, and I'm recording directly onto a T5 SSD. Now when I'm done, offloading the footage will be as simple as plugging the drive into my MacBook Pro, where I then import the clips into my Final Cut Pro library, which lives on you guessed it, another Samsung T5. It's only when I've completed my edit and published the video that I then copy the project onto my conventional disk array. Uh, now this for me is a great workflow that makes editing really quick and easy, whether you're in the studio or out in the field. And I know that photographers love these drives too. You can quickly offload the pictures on your memory card and edit them right there on the T5. Uh, the drives themselves are enclosed in these lovely aluminium cases, so they're robust. You can chuck them into your kit bag, you don't need to worry too much. And Samsung says that they can handle drops from up to two meters, uh, which is good to know if you're suffering from sweaty hands, uh, like I am in this sweltering cabin this evening. Uh, they're lightweight too at just 51 grams, and they're only 10 and a half millimeters thick. In fact, if we compare the T5 to a standard external two and a half inch hard disk, you can see that it's a, it's a good deal more compact and uh, it's certainly lighter. Now Samsung provides you with software for PC and Mac to allow you to password protect the drive and then you can make use of its AES 256-bit hardware encryption. And Samsung provide a three-year warranty as well. There are four capacities available, 250 gig, 500 gig, one terabyte, and two terabyte. And there are four colors. Uh, this one is called Alluring Blue, apparently, which is uh, available on the 250 and 50 gig capacities. And you can have the one terabyte or two terabyte in black. Uh, there's also a red color, which is my favorite, and a gold one. I'll put the details and prices up on the screen now, but obviously prices fluctuate with time and, and they come down, don't they? They get cheaper over time. Samsung have released a newer version of this uh, called the T7, and it incorporates a fingerprint reader and it has USB 3.2 support. I'll do a separate review of one of those when I get a computer that actually supports USB 3.2. The T5 though is USB 3.1 and it comes with two connecting cables. You've got a, uh, a Type-C to Type-C cable and a Type-C to Type-A cable. And I've found these cables are actually the only weak point with the product. Both of my 500 gig models have got somewhat flaky cables and so I tend to use my own premium USB-C cables as a result. Um, though the ones that came with the newer one terabyte drives don't seem to have this issue. Now, if you connect with either cable to a machine with USB 3.1, you'll potentially get full speed on the drive. USB 3.1 is 10 gigabits per second, and that equates to one and a quarter gigabytes a second. Remember, eight bits to a byte. So if we do a quick disk speed test on the MacBook Pro with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, it shows performance around 480 megabytes a second on write and over 500 megabytes a second on read and that's pretty decent. I'll come back to the full results and comparison in a moment. Now you can also connect the T5 with the Type-C to Type-A cable to a computer that only has USB 3.0. And since I have a 2013 Mac Pro that has USB 3.0, let's run that same disk speed test again. And as you can see, we've lost more than a quarter of the performance that we got over USB 3.1. USB 3.0 has a bandwidth of five gigabits per second. So in theory, it should be able to achieve maximum speeds. But of course, in real world scenarios, you lose performance due to the various system overheads. So I did some more detailed testing. 
I've run the disk speed test five times for each of my four drives on USB 3.1, and then I did it again on USB 3.0 to get some averages. Yeah, I know how to have fun. And what I discovered is that the drive performance is very consistent. Uh, though one of my 500 gigabyte drives seems to be a bit more variable, and I'm, I'm not sure why that is, but given the consistent performance on the other three, I think it's safe to discount the odd numbers. So the average performance for the 500 gigabyte model over USB 3.1 is 487 megabytes a second on write and 513 megabytes per second on read. The one terabyte drives are identical on write performance, but they're consistently quicker on read performance at 525 megabytes per second. I don't have any 250 gig or two terabyte models to test, but it seems to me that there may be a very small performance benefit to the larger drives, but only on USB 3.1, because if we do the same test over USB 3.0, we find that read and write performance for all the drives is consistently between 361 and 363 megabytes a second. So when we connect via the faster USB 3.1, we're able to see the actual peak performance of the drives, whereas on USB 3.0, the performance is being bottlenecked by the overhead of that slower connection. So it is fair to say that Samsung could indeed make a faster drive, and USB 3.1 would be capable of handling a little more performance. So how do these results compare to other drive types? Are they fast? Are they slow? Is it somewhere in the middle? Well, a good portable two and a half inch spinning hard disk would run about a third of the speed we're seeing on these T5s. So the Samsung T5 is way quicker than any conventional USB hard disk. And even if you had a very fast spinning disk inside your computer, it's still going to be less than half as quick as this T5. If we compare the T5 to something like this Thunderbolt 3 external enclosure that's got an NVMe SSD inside, then what you'll find is the T5 is a good deal slower. And compared to the SSD inside my MacBook Pro, the T5 runs like a snail. Um, SSD drive speeds are ever increasing. So should you pay the massive manufacturer premium to get a large capacity, ultra fast internal SSD? Or does it make sense to save your money and buy some external drives like the T5? I'm gonna bang on about real world performance again. You know, you can do all the benchmarks you like, but the simple truth is most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a machine equipped with a 500 megabyte per second SSD and one with a 5,000 megabyte per second SSD for most tasks. Think of it this way. If you're stuck in a traffic jam, having a 200 mile per hour supercar makes no difference to you your rate of progress is dictated by the traffic conditions around you. And it's the same with the SSDs. If I'm playing back a super high quality 4K video with say a 250 megabytes per second bitrate, then all I need is a drive that can consistently manage that speed. Having a 5,000 megabyte per second drive will be indiscernible from using a T5. Now, of course, you will see the performance benefit of faster drives if you're copying huge files. But it should be noted that these very fast NVMe drives running at top speed, they get hot. And when they get too hot, they thermal throttle. In other words, they slow down. Now the T5 is fast enough to edit the high bitrate content that I shoot on my camera. And the, actually the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K can get up to 265 megabytes per second if you put it in anamorphic format in Blackmagic RAW. I don't shoot at that resolution, but you can. And the T5 is plenty quick enough for it. In fact, the T5 is even fast enough for the 6K version of the camera. I think there's only one setting that it might occasionally struggle with. Um, this is all assuming that it hits the same speeds as we got when testing on the MacBook Pro. Um, but my point is that these drives don't need to be any faster. And if they were, you probably wouldn't really notice. Uh, for the vast majority of us creatives, these drives are fast enough. But even if you're not a video or photo creative, you're just looking for fast, reliable, robust storage, then the T5 is more than likely gonna be fast enough for you as well. Uh, I've been using these Samsung drives for the best part of two years, and I've not had any issues other than the supplied cables being a bit flaky on a couple of them. I've never encountered any situation either where they felt slow or they weren't capable of doing what I needed in my workflow. I just want to say I'm not sponsored by Samsung in any way. I, I bought these drives with my own money and I'm, I'm recommending them based on my experience uh, because I think they're superb and excellent value for money. 
Uh, and if, like me, you work between a laptop and a desktop computer, say in Final Cut Pro, the T5 makes the transition between the two completely seamless. Uh, just unplug it from one, plug it into the other, and pick up where you left off. What a great product. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful, and as always, leave a comment if you want to ask a question or share your experience. I, I really enjoy interacting with you guys in the comments section. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, you know what to do, and hopefully I did enough to earn a thumbs up. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.